Welcome back. If you just joined us to watch in Channel's television, celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting, this is News at 10, a reminder of our major stories tonight. Nigerian military killed 22 insurgents in a battle in Lokomani, Borno State, but lose four soldiers in the process. Boko Haram's factional leader, Ibrahim Shekau, claims he's alive in a new video, a claim the military described as mere propaganda. Governor Nasser El Rufai visits communities recently affected by earth tremor, assures of government's commitments to manage the situation. And the United States ambassador to the United Nations accuses Russia of barbarism over the bombing of Syrian city of Aleppo. A reminder here that all our top stories can be found on our websites, channelstv.com and on youtube.com slash channelsweb. Log on to m.channelstv.com to view us live on a mobile device. You can also download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. Besides the news and updates, the Channel TV app has an eyewitness feature. Do use it to share those pictures or videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app and then type and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions. You sent a lot of pictures to Eyewitness Portal. It put together a few of them and about to show you now. We begin with this one showing the bad portions of the Enugu Onisha Road. Our Eyewitness reporter calls on state authorities to fix it and end the suffering of commuters. From Denro Chassis area in Enugu State comes our next photo. It shows a sports utility vehicle trying to make its way through floodwaters. Our eyewitness reporter calls on local council authorities to clear the blocked drains. This photo shows the impact of erosion on this road in Ogolua area of Oshobo, the Ocean State capital. Our eyewitness reporter wants the government to intervene before the road is completely cut in two. Moving on to Lagos, we see these young men hanging dangerously onto this moving commercial bus along Amadubelo Way. Our eyewitness reporter wants relevant agencies to help stop this rising trend. Our journey ends also in Lagos. We see a fallen truck along Emmanuel Street in the Ogudu area of the state. Our eyewitness reporter advises truck drivers to be more cautious on the roads. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, has advised Nigerians to persevere and remain committed to national development. He said this today at an interdenominational service to mark Nigeria's 56th Independence Day celebrations. Our correspondent Amaka Okafo reports. In the annual tradition, an interdenominational service was held to mark the 56th anniversary of Nigeria's independence. In attendance was Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibado and his wife, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Baba Kiai, Governor of Bielsa State, Mr. Sayaki Dixon, and a host of other dignitaries. <laughs> Typical of any Christian gathering, there was praise and worship. were offered for the peace of the country, the leadership and Nigerians at large. We praise your name for our country as we celebrate this 56th year of our national independence. In his sermon, the president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Most Reverend Samson Ayokunle, urged Nigerians to be patient, for with God and optimism, the country will surmount all of its challenges. Nigeria, your sons are no longer settled down. Neither shall your moon withdraw its head. For the law will be your everlasting life, Nigeria. And the days of your money shall be ended right away by the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The vice president on his path took a prophetic stance to pray for the country and assure Nigerians that better days are ahead. So our message to Nigeria today as Christians is be strong and of good courage. Do not be dismayed. God is faithful. He has promised and he will fulfill his promise. Every Nigerian will benefit from the new Nigeria 
in Jesus' mighty name. The promise of God to our nation is that he is building a new Nigeria. A Nigeria where there will be peace from the northeast to the Niger Delta. A Nigeria where our economy will experience abundance and prosperity. The interdenominational service is held every year to remember and celebrate Nigeria's independence from the British rule on the 1st of October 1960. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. As the crisis rocking the House of Representatives continues, former chairman of the House Committee on Appropriation, Abdul Mumin Jibrin, has called on the Senate to pass a resolution empowering it to discharge the functions of the National Assembly until the House of Representatives addresses all allegations of budget padding. Meanwhile, the chairman of the House Committee on Ethics and Privileges, Nicolas Osai, says it will be in the interest of Jibrin to appear before the committee. Our correspondent, Nare Lassisi, has more. This is the Committee of Ethics and Privileges. The House Committee on Ethics and Privileges at the investigative hearing on allegations of misconduct and breach of privileges brought against former chairman of the House Committee on Appropriation, Representative Abdul Mumun Jibrin. The committee says it expects the former chairman to appear before the committee on the allegations. But it appears that may not happen. I've given sufficient reason. I'm not going uh, before any ethics uh, committee. I've explained to you the chairman of the ethics committee in himself had made uh, a lot of public uh, uh, statements. I've quoted in my speech, he, made, uh, he made, uh, granted an interview to Premium Times where he said uh, there is nothing like a pardon and pardon is not an, uh, an offense and is a person who is going to pass judgment uh, on me. And many members of this committee were part of those putting on mufflers. Uh, in the chamber on that day and everybody knows the lawmaker displayed documents which he says backs up the allegation he has made against the speaker and some members of the house if you go further you will see that of the whip if you go for that, he also calls on the Senate to insist that the allegations are addressed by the House of Representatives and that is why we are now suggesting that okay that is fine if he refuses to step down the Senate should also choose between Nigeria and Dogara. If they choose Nigeria, then they should pass a resolution, rely on the doctrine of necessity, and continue exercising the powers of the National Assembly until such a time that this investigation will be, uh, uh, this matter will be, will be resolved. Meanwhile, the chairman of the House Committee on Ethics and Privileges, Representative Nicholas Osai, says it will be in the interest of the former chairman to appear before the Ethics Committee. We are looking forward to seeing him tomorrow. I believe uh, it, is the, it's, it is in his own interest to appear to defend those issues. Uh, this is the issue of institution. Institution have referred the institutional issues to us, and we are looking into it. Nigerians will now have to wait and see how the House Committee on Ethics will go forward with its investigations if Representative Jibrin fails to appear, and what the committee will recommend to the House of Representatives. Lanre Lassesi, Channels Television News. There may be more trouble for the ruling All Progressives Congress as its national leader, Senator Bola Tinubu, is demanding the resignation of the party chairman, Chief John Odige Oyegun. In a statement released today, Senator Tinubu accused Oyegun of sabotaging the will of democracy in Odo State by overriding the decision of the appeal panel that asked for a fresh governorship primary following investigations that showed that the delegates list used had been tampered with. He went on to say that Oyogun's action in allegedly subverting the will of the people must have been under the influence of a powerful and sinister arm at work. The former Lagos State Governor also alleges that the APC was now under threat of being suffocated by anti-democratic forces pretending to be progressives. Meanwhile, Yoruba leaders have called on federal and state authorities to implement socio-economic reforms to end the recession. This is one of the resolutions reached at a forum in Ibadan, the Oyo State capital. Participants, including politicians and historians, also highlighted the importance of cooperation between federal and state governments. 
The rich cultural heritage of the Yoruba people on display here at the International Conference Center and the University of Ibadan. Gathered in this hall are eminent sons and daughters from Yoruba land with the aim of celebrating the past, the present and the future of the race. And this sets the tone for the discussion of the day, which centers on the way to resolve the recent economic challenge in the country. And one of the ways by which we have to move forward is to resuscitate our ideals. Various speakers agree that the problems facing the country and the region are self-inflicted. The political economy of the Yoruba people has been bastardized and unless we reconstruct it and regain our stature as producers we cannot get to the height we want to or even reclaim what we were before if all our governors even though they were elected on different platforms if they collaborate with one another if they talk to one another Certainly, the kind of development that we are likely to have will be the kind that is desired by all. Issues affecting education and cultural appreciation were also discussed extensively. In the 60s and 70s, um, we knew what we learned from the JF Dojo classics, but they no longer use such uh, literature. And so what we teach children nowadays has no bearing has no significance for the kind of society we are trying to build. Uh, parents are no longer attentive. Mothers should just recognize their role that God has given them to pass their culture and language you know, to their children. The recommendations here, no doubt, will serve as an available guide to solving the nation's multiple problems, but whether this will be applied remains the prerogative of those in government. Going up north now, some residents of Khoi community in Kaduna state have fled their homes following the recurrence of earth tremor. The governor, Nasir El Rafai, has visited the community to commiserate with the residents, assuring them of the government's taking steps to determine the cause of the incident. An air of anxiety still hovers over Kwai, the headquarters of Jabba local government area of Kaduna State, following an earth tremor that has hit the community for a second time. Some houses have been affected with a few cracks on the walls. Most of the residents, especially the non-indigents, have fled the community. The only ones left are still in shock. We are living in fear. We don't know what will happen next. Many have left. Many, some, Kaduna, Abuja, Joss, Kafinchan, Chefi, Nasarawa. We are taking courage to stay. The state governor, Nasir El Rafai, accompanied by his deputy, are in the community to see the paramount ruler and commiserate with the residents. The paramount ruler of Khoi says that the earth tremors created a lot of tension in the community. When the first one happened, people did not take it serious. But the second one made the people, especially strangers, leave our community. We thank all the state and federal government agencies, parastatals, universities, and the media for their prompt response. After the meeting with the residents, Governor El Rafai says the government is doing its best under the circumstances to know what steps to take towards addressing the situation. The uh, agency involved in remote sensing, geology and so on has been here. The government at state and federal level is doing all it can and I think there is no cause for panic. This is something that can be managed and it has been managed so far and we are grateful to God that it has come in a way that it has not caused any loss of life, no, not even injury, okay, but cracks in buildings. That we can 
uh, deal with. As the experts put their heads together to unravel the factors responsible for the quake, the residents of Kwai community may have to contain their fears till help arrives. Still ahead of the news at 10, our community report tonight looks at the dispute over the ownership of a piece of farmland between Ajaji and Obobo communities in Delta State. Please join us again. Thank you.